Hello friends, my name is Ashraf Khan and I'm the IT in charge for Global Logic Bangalore and Nagpur. Today I'm here to give you the basic outline for change management procedures and proposed implementation steps. Change management already we are implemented in Global Logic, but we have uh, few process needs to be thoroughly accepted and implemented. So this is the basic guidelines and as how we can full-fledged implement the change management in global logic going further change management as you all aware that change management is a process where a change is implemented for the guidelines as per the guidelines of change management ITR practices as you all aware that the main purpose of this change management is to ensure that we have a standard mechanism standard methods adopted across all the locations of global logic this will definitely give you efficiency and a prompt handling of all the IT tickets and all the IT issues change management is also used as a, a proof of task which has already implemented and it is very important that we should record each and ev each and every aspects of change so that you know, it can be used as a evidence it can be used as a future reference overall with the help of change management the business risk is optimized Coming to the scope of change management, change management is the the all the process which uh, we already have in place in global logic location, but we need to f do few enhancements in the existing request for change process. We need to collaboratively develop a single IT change management process where all the roles and activities on the plans are identified. We need to develop an organization-wide IT chain management process with the roles that provides the following functions. Implementation of the tool for generating RFC using some of the agile or the existing method. As you are all aware that we are using the Jira ticketing system for RFC. We need to also have the change across the say, coordination of the change across the IT environment so that all the changes made are as per the process and the guidelines of ITL. We need to monitor the process rigorously so that it will come into practice on a regular basis. The main objective of change management we want to ensure that the changes are recorded. Evidences are very important. Whatever the changes we have done, whatever the changes we have made, it is very important that we should keep a record of those changes so that when a person is uh, a person who has done the change when and he is he is uh, like not available in the organization and some other person needs to take care of the change, then it is very important that with the help of the recorded processes uh, whatever the, the the existing changes has been done he can with the help of the previous references he can able to do the analysis what changes has been done in the past so as per the previous records he can able to take care of the new changes so the main objective is to have uh, evaluated recorded authorized prioritized planned, implemented, documented and reviewed in a controlled manner. We need to have a process which should be developed and organization wide so that you know, we can have a facilitated change management process across all the locations. We need to identify the required change process task and the success factors. We also need to evaluate the current process and to be the change process and the information. We need to identify the roles for the change management so that each and every person can perform the job and the change management responsibilities effectively. 
we have to identify the change management performance measure so that whatever changes we are made that each and every changes is measured properly so that we should not make any mistakes in our in ex executing the change identification of change management resistance and its measures change if any new change is coming there is always a resistance so we need to identify the measures how the change management can be uh, effectively optimizedly and we can able to uh, inform the people okay this is the change we need to do and we can full fledged implement change management process we need to identify all other activities and plan for future ownership and execution the primary goal of change management in global logic it is to have a process defined manage the initiation review approval and implementation of all the proposed it changes it can be a hardware change it can be updating a system software firmware chief application state new up upgrades documentation processes new acquisition new announcements so any change it should be properly approved implemented and authorized so now the question arises that why i should invest my time in change management when i am already involved in other itl processes the answer is very simple there are so many things which we are doing on a regular basis but many of them we are not doing any documentation and if we don't document any any mechanism it is not uh, effective it will not going to be effective means of proposition so if you can see this a proper change management can able to help you to upgrade upgrade the system stability integrity and performance it will reduce your system maintenance time and efforts it will also enhance the business alignment and flexibility it will set the availability goals user satisfaction definitely will going to increase and it will ultimately result in high productivity of the it staff during the time of audits and accountability it will definitely going to improve the performance it will always a good itl change management process will decrease uh, emergency fixes because we are doing a regular maintenance and this will definitely help us you know to optimize our system and reduce the emergency fixes it can eliminate repeat changes it will also decrease the possibility of risk increase visibility of internal controls and it will integrate with other itl departments so that we can have effective change management process in our system so if you can see here the importance of effective change management is dramatic improvement in business operations are nearly impossible without effective change management so if you want to have a, a good improvement in your business operations uh regular change management is a very effective tool f without you know without which you you cannot have a great change without change management the implementation of corporate innovation culture where the organization is eager and open to innovate and change is nearly impossible if you can implement the of the complex system of information technology will fail or will fall short of expected ROI without effective change management. So overall, if you can see, change management plays a very vital role in implementation of a good ITL process. Stages of change management. We always keep on doing so many changes in our regular infrastructure to have a better to provide a better services to our clients to our users many times uh, we are oblivious to change we we don't know what are you know what changes is going on so for example many times we 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 were working and all of sudden the network goes off we came to the department and we asked the concerned person 
hey did the switch just reboot it because I'm not able to access my network so this is obvious to change change happened but nobody knows sometimes you are aware of the change switch you do you reboot the switch the network team reboot the switch because they want to ensure that the services affected services get restored so this is aware of change hey who just reported the switch so this is a condition where you know the switch got re reported and you want to know who has done this because this has not priorly intimated announcing the change this is a good practice where the concerned person is saying that okay I am doing this change let me know if you have faced any problem but in a real life scenario this is not the right way to do the changes because this is a this method is not going to is not a foolproof solution for any fixes because this is a trial and error method and this is not going to survive uh, IT department so it's always better to to have a proper change management system authorized change so here the person he is asking he needs to reboot the switch and who needs to authorize this this is a part of a good change management process scheduling change when is the next maintenance windows I would like to reboot the switch this is the proper if if you can able to restrict okay this can be postponed till the next maintenance window it is always a better option because interruption in the services is always gives you trouble so it's better you do maintenance in the next maintenance windows verifying change you can also look into the fault manager logs and you can see that, that the switch got rebooted so overall if you can see managing change is better to schedule the the change with a proper time and proper uh, intimation proper communication to all the affected areas and like for example here let's schedule the switch reboot to the next week along with the windows downtime like every month we have a downtime for windows fixes and patch management so it's better to you know to to mix with the to align with the the existing downtime and do the maintenance so in this way you are not you are the users are not getting affected so this is the right way to do the changes the key performance indicators for change management are so like it's very important to know the KPIs because if you if you don't know that the proper KPIs then it is really difficult to understand the importance of change management the number of changes implemented to services which met the customers agreed requirements that is quality cost time expressed as a percentage of the all changes so we have to keep a record of the changes we have implemented to the services and it should be as in the agreement as per the agreement and in uh, in agreement with the customers so they have they should have a proper communication whatever the changes we are doing we have to intimate them in advance so that the services will not be suffered so the there, there will be no man hour loss so reduction in the number of disruption to the services defects and rework caused by the inaccurate satisfaction poor or incomplete impact assessment of change so we need to identify that we need to reduce the the number of description to the services we need to identify we need to uh, evaluate okay this is what is the right time to do the changes what what can what in on what time the change the the services can can be down so that the changes can be implemented and defects and reworks caused by the inaccurate specification should be avoided many times we do changes without proper guidance without proper 
evaluation of without proper testing and studies so this will definitely going to give you defects and rework this has to be avoided poor and incomplete impact assessment of changes so these things we have to take into consideration while we do the change reduction in the number of unauthorized changes so we have to reduce the number of unauthorized changes reduction in the number of percentage of unplanned change and emergency fixes so there so emergency is is not in our hands you know it can come at any point of time but with the proper maintenance of the of the services of the systems we can avoid emergencies breakdowns and we and the main kpi is to re reduce the number of the percentage of unplanned changes and the emergency fixes change success rate percentage of change deemed successfully at review number of rfc approved so what whatever the approved rfcs we have we have to make sure that we have a successful change management rate reduction in the number of changes where remediation is invoked reduction in number of failed changes we need to average time to implement based on um, urgency priority change type incidence attribute to change percentage accurate to change estimates so this is the basically we need to see that these kpis are very important to effective change management process implementation the overall if you see the the present status of change management at global logic we have a normal maintenance emergency request for change process in place we use our jira help desk as the implementation tool for rfc and following process of the change management defined in the policy we have a list of change management flow and process well defined we already have defined our cap committee this is uh, change advisory board which are normally comes into picture where when authorization is required we have already clearly defined the scope with respect to the service desk windows linux and network we have a list of pre approved changes covered in the scope we do a monthly downtime process covered in the tool process for testing after changes are defined and documented and rfc for maintenance process are available in the tool so these are the existing process it's already in place and we need to identify how to effectively utilize this process to have a effective change management in our department so continuing the present scenario change logging and rfc are not carried out on a regular basis we, it has it has been observed that many a change we are not doing re, we are not uh doing the the regular practice it is not in the in the practice and changes are taking place without any notification no evaluation of change impact we are not doing any uh, impact analysis there is no knowledge of change taking place between it groups or by the service desk many times it happens that changes are done but it groups are not aware of the changes to re no reporting is taking place we, there is no documentation we are maintaining standard of change management is in place but they are hardly used there is no historical or accurate data available for number of changes implemented so these are the present scenario where we are lacking somewhere in the in the process and we need to overcome this process by implementing the change management in a better way so if you can see a standard process of change management is a rfc is generated then the request for change is reviewed and necessary process further it will we we have to see whether it's a emergency change or it's a normal change or it's a maintenance the change is accessed and categorized based on the impact on the urgencies if it is a urgent it needs to be authorized 
if once the change is authorized then it will go to the change authorization and change planning for the implementation of the change and finally uh, once the change is implemented it needs to be re reviewed whether done as per the proper planning or as per the guidelines set in the authorization board as per the authorization board so this is the the standard flow of uh, ITL change management process where we need to follow this in our existing change management process to have a better change management implementation so we have a normal change request a person a change initiator is a he can be based on the infrastructure changes or any incidents he can raise a RFC a normal change request can be part of a proposed resolution or an incidents or a problem management in such case the description of ticket ID should be included in the normal change request another factor initiate the normal change management process is to propose introduction or removal of the configuration items in the system if you want to do any changes in the system whether it's uh, the change in the firmware of any switch or any hardware changes or any changes in the security patches if if we need to do any kind of configuration item change we have to properly identify and we need to properly document in the change management process a proposed upgrade to some of the components of the infrastructure or uh, or a physical location change is also a part of it will come as a part of normal change request the change initiator may be in a right position in the business to submit the change but may not always be the familiar with IT environment itself in this instance a change owner or change manager from the IT environment should be assigned who will be able to provide the necessary information to the technologies so this is a classic example of a project manager or a delivery manager raising a change request whether he is not well versed with all the IT procedures and IT guidelines and he needs to be properly formulated and he should be guided so that the RFC will be you know in proper flow and the change request takes place as per the normal process and the guidelines so this is a normal change request which we will see in our in our later uh, in our later presentation emergency change request this is the uh, part we want to do more emphasis on this emergency change request so uh, what is the emergency change request so it is a respective retrospective changes which are performed during the business emergency so any changes which is which is as part of a business emergency where we normally don't have sufficient time for documentation in other words we have to perform the change first and then we need to do the doc documentation to so that you know minimum we we can we can make the services up in a minimum time so any services interpretation that is classed as high impact either on account of the number of users affected or because the system and the services that are critical to the project or to the business are involved it should be responded immediately to avoid any further business loss so the solution to the problem frequently requires a change and this has to be carried out f with the following emergency procedures so for example in case if a server goes down we need to inform the cap team that okay this is the okay the server has gone down and which has affected a major users so based on the cap authorization either we need to buy a new server or we need to make one new server ready so these are the 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 cap team will will going to give us guidelines what exactly has to be done to to have a, a quick solution to the emergency 
so a decision by a change manager it is uh, it is also acceptable because it is not possible sometimes to reach the emergency committee in in case if the emergency occurs in the weekend or the or a holiday so this change management emergency change request is that there, there are certain mandatory information required to identify and to cater the needs of the emergency change request the firstly the first and the foremost the change initiator full details is required description of change that is a full account of the nature of the change a suggestion for the priority and category of the based on the information available problem report in case if it is incidence or it can if it is a breakdown it needs to be described with a proper with the proper guidelines reason for the change so this is a very important aspect why we are doing this change a cost benefit analysis and the budgetary approvals if required if the change is a huge implications are not implemented the change including any sls that are risk so we need to take care of the sls if we are dealing with the third party services impact and resource assessment that is which users will be going to maximum affected and how big is the effect during the the change we need to provide a detailed description of the location of the release and the suggested implementation plan with the time scales we it's a very important to define the timeline in case of the emergency changes back out plan including triggers and decision makers contact details because this is a very important this team will make a, will play a very crucial role in case of any failure in the implementation stage impact on business continuity and contingency plans if any risk involved in making the changes so these are the very uh, some of the very important details we need to fill up in the sheet before we roll out the emergency change request this is the standard change management flow chart which we need to implement for global logic for all the locations so if you can see the flow chart change initiator once the the rfc is initiated the uh, implementer will be raising the rfc rfc if the rfc is minor or it's a it's a normal routine change then it will directly it will go to the implementation process in case if the emergency if the rfc is in emergency then it will go to the cab committee for the authorization and a mail will be sent to the cab committee for authorizing the change and in a further it will we will be keep on sending the reminders till we get the approval from the cap committee in case if if it's not a if the rfc is not a emergency then we need to check if the rfc is standard change and requires cap authorization there are many cases where we will where, where we need to authorize the we we need to take the authorization from the cab for because of the budgetary constraint or some other or or, or some other uh, litigations where we need to take the prior authorization before doing any change so in case if it is a uh, a normal process it will go to the the implementation process then after the testing process is done by the implementation team we will we'll going to the, do the implementation implement the change and review the change 
if it is successful whether to to evaluate whether the change implemented is successful as per the plan and finally we'll do the documentation of the change because this documentation process is very important for the future references so if you can see this priority definition emergency causing loss of services or severe usability problem to a large number of users a mission critical system or some equal serious problem immediate action required emergency meetings of a cab or emergency committee may need to be convened resources may need to be immediately allocated to deploy such authorized changes so mostly we will be focusing mo ma majorly on emergency changes and maintenance changes and during the first phase of the change management process maintenance change request normally we do maintenance on a very regular basis for example we are doing patch management uh, monthly basis we are doing firmware upgrades as and when we we get the firmware from the uh, vendors we are we are doing our a standard defined methods to avoid any kind of breakdowns or or maintenance we are doing to have a proper working of the system so standard changes include regular scheduled maintenance frequently performed administrative tasks such as profile changes or lesser service requests these changes are defined in the calendar and every maintenance change management task and should be tested so before we uh, we go to the change management proposed flow for the global it task we will going to see the the process where we going to how to request how to generate a, a rfc so if you can see this this is the first page uh, there's a landing page for global logic change management process where you can see this it service desk request for change so if we if we go further so if you can see this we have normal emergency and maintenance changes in place so if you select a normal you need to provide a detailed summary like what what uh, what exactly the changes has to be taken place say for for example i need to do a change required for backup system of project server 1 so this changes is a normal change where you need to define the the, the project the project name the the number of the 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 person who is responsible for the project complete description of the server where you need to change the backup system the complete description of the scope like if if it is a backup it it will go to the uh, windows team and you need to keep person in cc where you, where the the concerned person who is who is responsible for doing this changes also if we need to have any additional documents we need, we can attach with this and if any approvals are required by the respective project owner we can go for the approval for this so this is the very standard change where you can you can identify a change and it will be submitted to the help desk team after evaluating the change request it will be uh, given to the respective concerned implementers 
uh, in that in this case the implementer is Microsoft team that is a Windows team so the consent team will be given this task and after the execution of the task they'll give you complete details what what they have done and what changes they have made secondly in case of emergency as I said emergency we have to have complete details of what kind of emergency we have a complete details what project what what what, what is the type of the emergency what description we have to give in the emergency what are the changes which, which we are going to implement during this emergency a complete description we have to give as per the guidelines we have provided if you can see this we have already defined all the guidelines what 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 are the information we need to provide in the chain management system the RFC before we raise the RFC for uh, any emergency so these are the the few parameters we need to define while opening the ticket for emergency change request in case of maintenance change request there we, the same thing we need to for which project for extension for the complete description of the maintenance suppose if it is a windows so this is a, a IT global logic suppose this is a maintenance call firmware upgrade for Cisco L3 switch so we need to define a complete description what is the existing firmware what is the what is the new firmware whether we have tested this firmware before we we are before we be rolling out on the switches what is the responsible who will be the responsible for the change affected services what what services will be affected during this change of the firmware on the L3 switch like this is a part of network team so the affected scope will be network maintenance date downtime from to and the duration possible risk we need to evaluate and we need to put it in this okay the what what can be the possible risk maybe the the firmware may fail and the switch may not be responding properly after the firmware upgrade so how, what is the mitigation mitigation plan so we need to define the rollback plan the rollback du du duration and the other details related to the so we need to also take into consideration who all affected person are there we should keep them in the CC and the approval needed approval needed for doing the changes so once we do this it will uh, go to the uh, the help desk team and based on the evaluation it will go to the respective change owner and once the implementation is done the respective team will going to document what exactly changes has been done and it can be this record can be used for the future references so this is a proposed flow for global logic change management which we are going to implement very soon so if you can see the request for change generation recap committee access authorization build test implementation review and close this is the standard process which we are going to implement and we are also going to implement few changes in our existing Jira ticketing system 
where we're going to add few more aspects on this so before we conclude this session I would like your cooperation your participation in this process to review and to evaluate the complete change management process and to to implement in a in a proper way thank you so much for listening to my video and very soon I'll come up with the module 2 that is implementation advanced implementation of the chain management thank you for your time have a nice day